Hello, my name's Rex Spazlerfield, and I'd like to welcome you to a video about my Quilcom Sim Guzhong. A Guzhong is an ancient zither-like instrument uh, from China, and historically it can have um, a wide range of number of strings, uh, up to a maximum of 26. Modern day configuration has settled on 21 strings, uh, tuned in a D major pentatonic scale typically. For technical reasons, uh, 24 strings um, uses the same CPU as 21 strings, so my single zhong features 24 strings. If you're interested in learning more about this instrument and its background um, take a look in the background info folder where you'll find uh, a lot more information one of the main features of the sound of the Guzhong and its derivatives like the Japanese Koto is the bridge arrangement so these are the strings which the player plucks and on the other side of the bridge if a player presses down on uh, one of these strings it will raise the pitch and also allow for vibrato. When you first load the plugin, you may notice that the resting CPU is higher than you might want or expect, but this is due to the fact that each string has its own free running synthesizer. And that means that when you play rapid glissandos, the increase in CPU is very small. With a conventional polyphonic synthesizer system, uh, rapid glissandos would cause quite a dramatic rise in CPU, and this plugin doesn't suffer from that. To play the instrument, you just use the white notes starting from C3 and going up to E6. And that arrangement allows you to play glissandos very rapidly and smoothly. Another big advantage of that system is that you can play pretty much anything you want and it will sound right due to the pentatonic tuning. The tuning panel here allows you to set um, the key of the whole instrument. And you can pick the five notes of the repeating pentatonic scale with these controls here. And you'll see that the readout changes if I change the key. The first six presets give you examples of different keys that you can try out so the conventional one is major pentatonic in d you can have a minor in d blues minor in d and this is one i like which is a, i call the exotic east The default button always returns all the settings to the major pentatonic in D. Uh, these little blue knobs allow you to detune the individual scale elements individually, so you can uh, experiment with microtuning using those. For some reason, which <laughs> I don't understand, um, apparently these instruments are sometimes tuned to uh, A equal 442 hertz um, so if you wish to do that just click on there and it makes a small difference to the tuning across the board so now I'll talk about the strings panel 
The first thing to mention is I've provided a range of key switches and if you click on that you'll you'll see what the key switches are as a reminder. So B2 is um, the tremolo in it and the velocity that you hit B2 will determine the tremolo speed. So a higher velocity strike will cause a faster tremolo. Key A2 provides a one octave higher harmonic. G2 damps the um, strings to give uh, a much faster decay. Players normally have uh, plectrums taped to their fingers to give them um, a strong attack, but also they can, with their left hand typically, pluck with the finger instead, which gives a softer sound, so we use F2 for that. Some modern players will actually tap the sound box to create a percussive rhythmic element so we use E2 to generate that sound and that's velocity sensitive. The decay time um, of the strings is uh, pitch related but we can adjust the overall decay using the decay knob. If you double click on this and all the other knobs you'll get the default. Um, so I'll just extend this. And reduce it. We have two settings for tremolo. One is the bass repetition speed and this speed is increased by striking the key switch harder and i noticed that skilled players can actually alter the level of their plucking force so i provided a control for that which can be automated after the event to add expression Now, when you operate the B2 key switch for tremolo, um, the tremolo will only be applied to any keys that are currently pressed, which means you can play a staggered chord and just have a tremolo on the key that's depressed when you press the B2 switch. The synthesizers make use of tapped waveguide oscillators and you have two controls here which affect the timbre. There's the tap end mix and the tap position on the delay line. These two controls interact so you can experiment um, to get the sort of sound that you're looking for. When the TE mix knob is in its central position, the tap knob becomes greyed out because it will have no effect on the sound. Because a tapped waveguide uses four delays and the tap alters the proportion of time assigned to those delays, if you automate the tap button, you can get um, a strange kind of uh, vibrato. This type of instrument, um, uh, along with the Koto, is designed 
to emphasize partials three and four. So this is um, a global or macro control for adjusting that aspect of the sound. It also simulates uh, close miking where the fundamental is more emphasized than more distant miking. As I mentioned before, um, bending of the string pitch upwards is um, a common feature of um, Chinese music played on this instrument. So we have two methods of bending the strings. The first is to just bend the note that is held down and no others. Or we can hold more than one down and bend them all should you wish to. which would be almost impossible on the real instrument. To control um, the bend, we have four options. The pitch pen wheel, after touch, the controller, which we can choose here to be the mod wheel or a foot pedal or whatever. And if you don't have any external means of doing it, you can actually bend with a knob and automate that. And of course, this sets the maximum pitch bend range. The bend any panel is provided mainly for automation, so you can bend any sounding note you wish to at any time with the appropriate uh, knob. So if I go, these are the keyboard keys, so if I press C4, And if I release C4, I can bend it even though I'm not pressing the key. Now these bend knobs don't spring back, so you can use them to detune every individual string. So if I play C4, every time I play that C4, it will be bent up by that amount. This knob, of course, sets the uh, semitone range of all the individual knobs, and this will return them to zero position. An important aspect of any uh, acoustic instrument is the contribution made by the sounding elements, the soundboard, the backboard, and so on. And these can emphasize certain frequencies above others. So what we have here is actually a formant designer so we can set uh, four different frequencies the resonances and the levels mixed together and then we can add um, a certain amount of that frequency characteristic to the dry signal so i'll show you the dry signal And we have two types of filter, uh, which use the sound controls as the bandpass and the comb. Which have different characteristics. Of course, if you want to use your own external EQ, you can turn the form and system off. And also you can turn the built-in reverb off and... Um, all your uh, effects processing can be separate. And so, as always, there's lots more detailed information in the user guide. And uh, I hope you have a bit of fun with this. And until the next time, bye!